Okay, so um, we'll carry on now with the So we'll just get into this introduction, there's a bit of information there um, describing this section. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is to create some um, virtual file systems. So let's run these commands in. Let's just double check we've got our LFS set again because we don't want to make any mistakes at this point, it's quite a critical part, so let's just echo LFS, and yes it's set, so we can paste that in. And then normally the device, the dev directory is populated automatically, but these two need to exist when the machine boots and before the dev gets populated. Now these few commands might look similar, they're similar to the ones we did in uh, the Gen 2 where we're mounting some of the virtual file systems um, in the LFS partition so they're available in the Truit environment because uh, certain programs will need them. And once again I'm entering each command by itself, although it's in one grey box, you could in theory copy them all. If one of these failed, it, it could be quite easy to miss unless you're scrupulous in examining the output of each command. And it says say about some host systems, def SHM is symbolic link to run SHM. So we can run this regardless of whether that's true or not, because there's an if statement, it'll actually test to see if that's the case or not. So just run it in and it looks like this didn't do anything. So it's a bit about package management. Um, if you want to keep this LFS installation for future use and upgrading and so on. And now we finally enter the real LFS environment that we're going to build up. So at the moment it's obviously empty. We've only got the temporary tools which are not part of the final environment. Um, if I list what we've got there, you can see these are the directories just, just created. Um, there's a tools directory, there's a sources directory. You can see these other ones are, empty. Uh, sorry, they're owned by root at the moment, but there's no name. Uh, but that one's empty and that one's empty too. <coughs> so now we're going to make lots more directories. So we're just creating like a skeleton structure of the layout of the Linux file system. Again, I'm just going to do these one at a time. It takes longer, but if you're confident if you've done this before, then obviously you know what you're doing. But if you're new to this or first, you know, first few times, you probably will just want to take a step at a time, take it easy, make sure there's no errors, and you also get a chance to see the output of each command, a bit more time to examine the output, see what each command's doing if you don't understand totally what they're doing. So now again we've got a case statement, so that's terminated by the ESAC word and it's testing to see if this is 64-bit, it's going to make a directory called lib64 so when we run this we will see it making a directory and there it is. Okay, so that was all created, okay. 
now we're creating some central files and symlinks. So some of these are files that are going to be written, but they need to, oh, I've written, sorry, but they need to exist, or they need to point to something, or, you know, there might be some other reason why they've got to be here at the moment. So you can see, for example, bin bash is pointing to the bash in tools. So some commands will be looking for bash in bin, and obviously we haven't installed that yet in the um, final LFS system but it may need to be executed so we just create a link to the bash that we created in tools and as when we come to create bash and build bash and install it the sim link will be overwritten that link will be destroyed and any subsequent commands that we use bash will be using our one we just built so you can see it's quite quite a neat way of transferring um, the use of the tools that we created yesterday onto the new system it all works quite smoothly and of course the programs that are running these programs we create links for they, they're not aware of that as long as they get a, a program that's usable they're happy and there's an explanation there of why each one's created create another link Then we create a default password file. So this is one. These cat commands, it's basically saying whatever's between the cat and the EOF at the bottom, it's going to be written into this file etc password. So we need to copy the whole lot of that. And likewise for this group file, create some default groups. Paste that in. And then because we've now got a root group and a root user defined in the password uh, this next command reloads the shell so that it rereads these files because that will or reads them rather because they now exist and it means we get rid of this I have no name message so it now knows that we are the root user <coughs> so just a few more files to create touch these ones it just creates empty files and these ones groups changed on that one and the permissions is changed on that file and this other file here btemp in the log that tells you what they will do down there if you're not um, not aware of them so that is the basic file system you can see we've got lots more directories there now of course they're all more or less empty apart from these few links and empty files we created